gang, what's going on YouTube? It's your boy Joe Fontaine of Joe Fontaine Music and welcome to the VIP Sound Lab. This is episode three and basically I was getting a lot of emails from a lot of uh, VIP members. They were wanting to know how to actually get the uh, MIDI uh, from Machine inside of Persona Studio uh, version two and I'm going to go ahead and show you a very fast and easy way to do that and give you um, full and total control over your mix. Uh, I believe this is the most fastest and easiest way possible to do this. And Studio One uh, version two, I believe, is probably one of the most slept on um, programs. This program is is thorough. In my opinion, in a lot of ways, this program is a lot better than Machine. I'm um, not hating on Machine. I use Machine a lot. I love Machine. But as far as workflow, there's a lot of workflows inside of Personas that hands down is just incredible to say the least. I love this program. And uh, I mean, I don't know what else to say about it. It is just incredible. But uh, before we actually get into the routing, let me walk you through just um, certain aspects of this program. For example, um, one thing I do like about Studio One, for example, uh, you can bring in certain keyboard mapping schemes, such as right here, I'm using the Pro Tools one because I'm very familiar with Pro Tools. You know, if you're coming from Logic or Cubase, um, I think it's pretty pretty tight that they actually have that where you can actually use shortcuts that you're familiar with. Okay, so that makes life a lot easier. And it reminds me of Pro Tools over here where actually you can uh, hit these little icons here and actually remove tracks. You know, if your session's getting a little crowded, you have the option here to actually remove tracks and you can bring them back like so. And I'm gonna bring these back. I just wanna show you how to get the MIDI routed uh, the fast and easy way and give you a full and total control over your mix um, as well as right here this icon here you can control the zoom okay so the first thing you want to do is you want to create your tracks now when you create your tracks you have instrument tracks here okay that comes after you have an instance of your VST open in this particular situation machine if you look over to the right here where it says machine okay any VST that you scan Okay, let me bring it up right quick where it says locations, VST. Okay, right here I'm using, I scanned my library from Ableton, which makes life easier. You don't have to sit there and get every VST over again. You just go inside wherever you have your VSTs. You simply rescan them. It's going to say scan and start up here. You remove that icon and it scans them in and you're, you're good to go. External devices, um, that's basically right here. I'm using the machine controller as my uh, MIDI controller right now. I don't have my uh, Axiom hooked up right now. And um, audio setup. This is basically where if you want to get uh, your sound card set up. Okay, so it can't get no easier than that. Again, here's machine. Okay, you want to point the MIDI to and from machine. Okay, you have instrument input. You have instrument output. Make sure they both say machine. Put them on channel one. The process repeats. You don't have to open up machine each and every time. You just simply, again, open up an instrument track. Okay. Once you have the instrument track open, you do the same thing to and from machine, except on this one, you go to channel two. The process repeats on and on and on and on and on until you have how many ever MIDI inputs that you want to use. This icon here is to control uh, the size of the tracks. What I like to do a lot of times, I like to shrink mine down because if you go on your last track, Okay, and then you go to your first instance holding shift. I did that a little bit backwards. Hold on. Holding shift. Okay, like so. What you do, once this section highlights, you right click on that and you press group selected tracks. Okay, when you press group selected tracks, your group now comes up. So now you just highlight or rather arm one track. Now they're all armed at the same time. So now when I use machine, there's uh, the first uh, pad, second pad, third pad, fourth pad, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth. I'm not sure if you guys can hear that audio right now. The way I have my mic hooked up, you might not hear that. I'm, I apologize for that. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. You see that they're all tracked out. OK, and this area here is where you can select your outputs. Um, it's going to say expand down here right now. Mine's saying collapse only because I already have it set up, but you can press expand and highlight one through 16 outputs. Depending on your sound card is how many uh, that you can have there. You can close this window 
you can select your ins and outs here, add bus channels, effects, and you also can um, divvy a trash can if you threw something away by mistake. As you see right here, I had a, a mini Moog, uh, and right here you can select your outputs and things of that nature, and have control of your overall uh, volumes, et cetera, et cetera. All right, so in machine, the easiest way to set this up, man, and I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you the best way to do it, and trust me when I um, tell you this. Let me skip this off. I don't need that on here right now. Okay. The best way to get that set up is over here. When you open up machine. All right. This is the best way to do it. Um, once you open up machine. Okay. I have um, a lot of expansion kits for machine right now. I call them VIP, Akai, and Native Instruments expansion series. I have two, two different series on that. Uh, those inside the VIP database right now. Uh, if my VIP members want to go ahead and download that, you guys can go ahead and download that. I have 10 new expansion kits in there. Uh, those people who are not familiar with the VIP database, um, it's a one-time charge, $9.99, no monthly fees. It locks you in for a lifetime subscription. So whatever I put in the VIP database, you can get anything from for free, whether it's controller, editor templates, um, drum kits, things of that nature. <clears throat> but anyway, all right, so here's the sound. So over here, under sound and MIDI batch setup, you wanna have that set up to sounds to MIDI channels, okay? And each individual sound pad here, you wanna right click on that. Go to sound and MIDI settings, why? Because the low note and high note, or rather your zone range, you wanna have that going up op octave so that it maps out to make your life a lot easier over here in Personas. I'll show what I mean in a second. You see right here, C2. Now over here, we're still in the C range, but we're going up octaves. You see right here, it's going up. And if I jump over here, um, I'm in the D's now. And again, I'm going up octaves. As you can see right here, we're going up to D2. As we're continuing on, again, going up octaves. An easy way to do that, um, where it says channel right here, like right here saying channel five, you know when, when you're on your root note or whatever, um, or your low note C1, you know once you, once you grab a hold of this and you move your mouse up, it's gonna move like this, okay? So you know if you're at C, if you, you know if you're at your your very lowest low low note and you're going okay you, you count up you go one two three four five that's it you know you're at right where you're supposed to be we go back one you can double check your work D two all right now we're over here and it goes up okay all the way into your last note let me move this up a little bit so it's easier to see your last note here ending off on D one. Okay, so basically what we're doing is we're just making a zone range. Now I tried, now this is a 16 channel routing template uh, and I think I'll throw this in the VIP database, but for whatever reason, if anybody knows why, whenever I save um, the sound MIDI settings under under this menu, for some reason they won't save. If anybody knows why, hit me back and let me know. That's driving me crazy. I don't know why it will not save. I save them and I come back and then when I come back it's erased every, every time. So if Native Instruments is watching, uh, I would love to see an update on that. That would be cool. So I have to keep going back and um, doing that. Now you're probably saying, Joel Fontaine, what are you talking about? Why do you want to do that? Why do I want to have a zone range like that? You want to have a zone range like that, um, basically because let me let me show you what I'm talking about here. Let me just go over here. Let me just go over here. Change my view. I don't need to see the console right now. Okay, because what happens now is being that the zone range is actually being mapped out now. So when I come here and I want to track out my MIDI, instead of having to do each track one by one, one by one, I now can do everything in one shot as if I was just normally playing on my machine hardware controller. And I'll show you what I mean. Check it out. Let me go ahead and rewind this. And I apologize if you can't hear that because the way I have my mic set up, you probably won't hear that. But let me get rid of this audio track so I don't need that. That's just that's just me talking on my mic. But oh yeah, in this area here it was where you can zoom in and out. See so, yeah, how you can zoom in and out like that. All right, but look at that. Look how they're all mapped out because of the group function. Now when I go into the editor screen, let me go over here so we can see it a lot quicker on the first try. 
When I go into the editor screen here, and again, you have smart tools here where you have a scrubber tool. If you wanted to move uh, the locator where we need the locator to be, a pencil tool, you know, a slicer tool. But anyway, wind that back. See how it's mapping out? That kind of reminds you of when you're sampling inside a machine where you can, you know, if you're chopping up your, your samples, they get mapped out. Now, machine automatically does this, okay, if you're doing, uh, if you're chopping up a sample. But what's cool about Personas is that it does this when it comes to your mid notes when you have them all in a group function. Because it makes editing a lot easier because you know immediately this is your 15, or rather your 16 pad. Excuse me, your 16 pad, you notice it's 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, all the way to 1. Okay, so when you come into edit your MIDI notes, your life is easier because you do not have to sit there and wonder what's what. Because if you do not do what I just told you to do over here inside a machine, and you're going to find out the hard way, every one of these MIDI notes are going to be on one octave. It'll be like, it'll be like where it says C3 right here. It'll be all the way across right here. And down here is where if you want to adjust your, um, you know, your pitch bend um, after touch mod modulation and velocity. But anyway, it's all going to be here and it's going to be hard for you to tell what's what. But if you do it this way, okay, and then when you come back over here to your group, now you dissolve the group. You right click again on that group. You press dissolve group one. Okay. When you dissolve group one, you notice how the track uh, group disappear right here. Okay. Y'all, and again, like pro tools, you can erase tracks like this. If the scene's getting too crowded over here, you can, you can erase those and bring them back. Okay. But you're saying, what's the point to that? Okay. The point to that is now that you dissolve the group, what's cool about persona is now look, when I go back on the first track, it's sitting completely by itself. There's no other MIDI notes on it. Okay. If I go to track five, sitting by itself, no other MIDI notes. Track six by itself. No other MIDI notes. Go to track seven. All by itself. No MIDI notes. And let's breeze back down. And on and on and on. They're all separated. You see that? I go through them. Each one is completely mapped out individually by itself, which automatically tracks out your MIDI just by using that function. Now, if I go back. <clears throat> group the tracks back and select it like so notice how down below they're now all mapped out again okay if I dissolve it they now become separated again just had to give it a little minute But that's the cool thing about that. They all get separated out like that. So that is the easiest way, man. Uh, the easiest way I can explain it. If you're going to be using a machine to have your um, MIDI completely separated and tracked out over here. As you can see, the LED is sounding off here. Inside of Personas. You know, I can't think of an easier way to do that. That is the most easiest and fastest way that I personally can think of. Uh, to get that done. So again, this is your boy, Joe Fontaine, the Joe Fontaine music, uh, the VIP sound lab. Again, I have a VIP membership. It's nine 99, no monthly fees. You get a lot of free controller editor templates and things of that nature. And that's pretty much it. So I will see you guys on the next one. And again, when you do scan your VSTs in here, okay. Like up here, like, okay, well, this is where you'll find like your quantization. Like up here, you have a, B, C, D, and E. You see that adjusting? I don't have any presets in there right now. I'm pretty much new to Persona, so it kind of jacks me up, guys. I'm sorry if I'm not going really in depth, but I'm, I'm pretty much new to this program. But you see, you can do your 16 triplets, and over here, you can save your presets. You see the quantization moving uh, over here. And again, you have smart tools up here, as well as down here. You can zoom in um, down here, as well as you can up here. And again, when you scan your, uh, your VSTs, as I was just stating, they will show up over here. So if you grab one, again, it's just simply uh, drag and drop. You just simply grab, grab it. It turns this little uh, icon here where you just simply drag it onto this little gray uh, space here. Okay, and you notice here how it gets showing up in the same box. We're gonna switch between machine and go right back to the mini move um, just that quick. So that's a pretty cool thing about that. 
how it uh, it groups your VSTs in one simple little window. So you can go back and forth between them really easy. So I thought that uh, was a major uh, workflow in itself. Okay. All right. So it's your boy Joel Fontaine of Joel Fontaine Music of the VIP Sound Lab. I will see you guys on the next one. Peace.